Dear viewers, welcome to this episode of Your Life, Your Bank. For NRIs, there is a lot of confusion around NRI banking. Which type of bank account I should use? What are the restrictions around different types of bank account? What is that I can do? What is that I cannot do? In this episode, I am going to talk about 13 points which you need to know about your NRE, FCNR and NRO accounts. Every point that I am going to discuss here is very important. It's a good idea you stay till the end of this video. Know these points for smooth banking operations. This is an RA Money Clinic for you. And I am Dr. Chandra Kanban, your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Let's look at the 13 points a little bit more in detail and one by one. The first one, the two categories of bank accounts which you can depend on or open are non-resident external account and non-resident ordinary account. Non-resident external accounts are the ones where you can repatriate the money without anybody's permission. You keep the money there, you can keep it in a fixed deposit, whatever the mode you want to keep it there. If you need this money outside of India, you can repatriate this money using the banking channel without anyone's permission. The non-resident ordinary accounts, you will have restrictions around repatriation. You can repatriate the money which is there in an RO account, but it is not freely repatriable. There is a documentation part you need to do. So the non-resident ordinary accounts are the non-repatriable account. Non-resident external accounts are the repatriable accounts. Point number two, how you can transfer money out of these accounts. If it is NRE account, you can transfer this money to one another NRE account. You can also transfer this money to a bank account outside of India, which means you can repatriate it freely. If you have an NRE account, you can also transfer money to an NRO account of yours or somebody else's. You can also transfer money from your NRE account to another savings bank account in India of someone else. All these things are possible. If it is an NRO account, you can transfer money to another NRO account of yours. You can transfer to savings bank account of anyone else. If you have a savings bank account as well as an NRO account, holding an SB account for an NRA is a offense as per the FEMA law. You cannot transfer money between your own SB account to an NRO account or from your NRO account to an SB account which you are holding against the law. You can also use the money which is there in NRO account to pay for any investment that you need to be doing in India. By the way, we NRI Money Clinic gives you two videos per week, every Tuesday and every Friday at 4 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Every video that I do is full of value for you. It gives you information. It solves the problem that could be there in your mind. Do not miss one single video. If you are not yet subscribed for this channel, it's time you hit that subscription button right now and press the bell icon. And do give us your feedback in the comment section as well. What are the videos you want us to produce? Uh, what is the doubts that could be there in your mind? The problems that you are passing through for which you need an expert advice. We are listening to you. Drop that comment now. Point number three, 10 euro fixed deposit. If you are doing a fixed deposit using these NRE and NRO account, there is difference between the fixed deposits here. The difference is with respect to 10 euro fixed deposit. If you are doing a fixed deposit in NRE account, the tenure will be minimum one year and the maximum will be 10 years. Whereas in case of NRO account, the fixed deposit tenure could be as little as a week to as long as 10 years. Point number four, the taxation of interest you get from these bank accounts. If you are receiving interest on NRE fixed deposit, the interest that you earn in India is tax-free. I repeat here, the interest is tax-free in India if it is an NRE fixed deposit. However, this interest could be taxed in the country where you are living. That depends on the type of taxation you have it in uh, the country where you live. For example, if you are living in the United States, the amount get taxed in US, whereas it does not get taxed in India. Whereas if you are living in UAE or in the Middle East countries where you do not have an income tax, it neither gets taxed in India nor it gets taxed in your country. You have to check with your 
chartered accountants in the country where you are living and see whether the interest that you earn in India, will it become taxable there or not. In case of NRO account, if you are maintaining a fixed deposit, irrespective of the country where you live in, the interest that you get is taxable in India. So the monies which are kept in NRO account are less tax efficient. The monies which are kept in NRE account are more tax efficient from an Indian taxation point of view. I would like to add a point here. When I spoke about the taxation, this taxation is only with respect to interest that you get from the fixed deposit. What if you have invested this money elsewhere using your NRE or NRO account? If you have invested in mutual funds, if you have invested in stocks, if you have invested in properties. In such cases, all the investment that you have made in India, irrespective of your NRE or NRO accounts, will be taxable in India. The tax-free status applies only to the interest that you get from your NRE account or as an extension of NRE account, the FCNR interest is also tax-free in India. Point number five, tax directed at source are tedious. How does the tedious apply for the monies that have been kept in your NRE and NRO account? If you have an NRE account and you are getting some interest from that, no tedious will apply for the interest that you earn. It's already tax-free, so there is no need for anyone to do any TDS there. Whereas the monies that you have kept in NRO, whether it's an SB account, whether it's an RD account, whether it is a fixed deposit account, will suffer from TDS uh, when the monies get paid out to you or at the end of the year, the banker will apply TDS. Is this not the TDS which applies there? The TDS will be applied at the highest rate of approximately 30% plus applicable CES. But there is one relief which is available here. You can check the DTA agreement between India and the country in which you live. If there are some relaxations which are given in the DTA agreement, then you can refer this to your bank, do the required documentation, and the TDS, which is lower than 30%, will be applied to your account. But as a rule, 30% TDS applies for the interest that is earned from NRO, whether it's in SB as well as in FD account. A point that I would like to add here is, many people get confused with 30% TDS. People think that 30% TDS is 30% tax. No, TDS is applied at the maximum 30% rate, whereas the actual taxation has to be arrived at by filing the tax return. You could have gone through a 30% TDS, but if you are not liable to pay any taxes in that year, file the tax return and you can get this refund back to you. So don't be under the impression that because TDS is done 30%, you have to pay so much money to the government, you don't get uh, anything back. That's not the correct version. NRA Money Clinic is helping the NRA community in the personal financial space, be it investing in India, be it building the retirement cash flow, investing in a safe way, investing through mutual funds, investing into insurance product, investing in the fractional commercial real estate. We have services available for the NRA community. We have experts on the ground to evaluate your situation, advise you in the right way that suits your requirement. Uh, your monies can be saved. You can do the investment in a very scientific way. You can make best use of experts on the ground here. If you have an intention to make use of the services provided by NRA Money Clinic, all that you have to do is reach out to us through the WhatsApp message. Our number is given here in the description box. We have also provided a link over there. Click on that link. It takes you to the WhatsApp. Send that message of the services that you need. And our team of experts are ever ready to help you. Why delay? Send that message now. Point number six, interoperation between NRE and NRO account. You can freely transfer money, which is there in your NRE account, to your NRO account. No questions asked. However, you cannot transfer money from NRO to NRE account in a normal course of time. It's still possible to transfer money from your NRO to NRE account, but a documentation is required. Your chartered accountant has to give a certificate. You have to fill in certain forms in the bank and it follows a particular procedure, only then the monies which are there in your NRO account can be transferred back to NRE account. Do not be under the impression that you just cannot transfer money which is there in your NRO account back into NRE account. There are restrictions around that. There are procedures to follow, 
but it is possible to transfer money from NRO to NRE. Point number seven. What are the types of account you can hold under NRE and NRO account? The types of account that you can hold are savings bank account, current account, RD account, and fixed deposit account. These types of accounts are same for both NRE and NRO accounts. Point number eight. Benefit for returning NRIs. If you're holding an NRE account, and you're coming back to India, you have an option there. When you have to close these NRE account, you can transfer the money which is there in the NRE account to an FCNR account or to an RFC account. RFC account is resident foreign currency account. That option is there only with NRE account. What if you have money in NRO account? Again, it's not possible to transfer it to RFC or an FCNR account when you come back. The only option available is you have to go through the documentation process. When you are in NRA, transfer the money which is there in your NRO account back into NRO account by doing the documentation. And from there onwards, you can transfer it to an FCNR or an RFC account as per your eligibility. Point number nine, the mode of holding. How can you hold your bank account? You can hold your bank account in the form of single account, that means you are the only owner, or you can hold it as a joint account. If you can hold it as a joint account, who can be the joint account holder? In case of NRA account, you can hold a joint account with any NRI, PIO, or an OCI. Can you hold a joint account uh, with a resident Indian? The answer is yes, but there are certain restrictions. You can hold it in the form of a joint account with a resident account, but the type of account that you'll be holding is on former or survivor basis only. And the resident account holder who is joining as a joint account holder in this case should be your immediate relative. You can't be holding it with anyone. This facility is given only to make sure in the unfortunate event of the NRI passing away, the money should get transferred to your relative seamlessly. You can have a joint account in this particular fashion in case if this relative is India, could be your wife, could be your father, it could be your mother, it could be your son, daughter, son-in-law, daughter-in-law. These are the kind of immediate relatives through which you can hold a joint account both in the NRE as well as an NRO account. Type of account is known as former or survivor basis. Only you as an NRI can operate this account. The joint account holder who is a resident relative cannot operate this account. The same rule applies for both NRE as well as NRO accounts. Point number 10, the currency of account, which means which currency you can hold this account. If it is an NRO account, the only type of currency you can have for this account is Indian rupee account. What about the NRE accounts? NRE accounts popularly will also have a rupee account. Uh, which is known as your NRE account. You can also hold this non-resident external account as a foreign currency also, but it is popularly known as FCNR account, foreign currency non-resident account. So you can have two different ways you can hold your NRE account, a rupee account and a foreign currency account. Under foreign currency account, you can choose which currency you need to hold. It could be US dollar, it could be a British pound, it could be Singapore dollar, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Hong Kong dollar, Swiss franc, or any currency which is made available by your banker, you can hold FCNR in those currencies. Point number 11, the credit and debit cards on these type of account. NRE account, you can have a debit card which can be used both domestic as well as international. There are no restrictions around it. If you have a debit card, you can freely use it when you are outside of India. Whereas in case of NRO account, the debit cards can be used only in India. It's a domestic debit card. What about the credit cards? Credit cards are at the discretion of the bank. One thing which is very certain is you will not get the true credit card. That means you spend first and then pay it. If you are given a credit card, it will be secured against a fixed deposit in the bank. You have to remit the money there, hold it as a security, Against that, the bank may issue a credit card for you. Point number 12, how can you receive money in these two types of account? In case of NRE account, you can remit money from outside of India. 
you can also receive money from NRE account of another NRA. That's perfectly for the. You can also receive money as a proceeds of investment that you have done from NRE account. For example, you have invested in an insurance policy and you have paid that money from your NRE account. Then such proceeds can be remitted into your NRE account. But it will not happen that easily. You have to give the proof of having invested this money from your NRE account to the institution which gives you a check. And it will give with a check stating that this money can be credited into NRE account. It's just not that you can bring a check and remit it NRE account and say, I invested this money. So institutions have to give you a certificate to state that this money can go into NRE account because monies were invested from NRE account. In case of NRO account, you can send money to your NRO account from outside of India. You can also send this money from your NRE account. The NRO account can also receive money from another NRE account. It can also receive money from another NRO account. It can also receive money from savings bank account of anyone else other than you inside India. It can also receive proceeds of investment that you have made in India using the monies from outside or bunnies or the income that you have generated in India. Your income in India, which could be rentals, which could be interest, it could be anything else that you are deriving in India, can only be credited into your NRO account. Point number 30, a housekeeping rule for all the NRAs. You may be living outside India for n number of years. Every year, at the end of the year, please take out your entire annual bank statement and maintain in an electronic way or in a physical way safely. It is required for multiple reasons going forward. Number one, if you have made investments using NRE account, the institution which pays you a maturity proceeds will ask you for a proof that you have paid this money from your NRE account. Now let's say insurance policies are long term in nature. They may mature after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. If you ask the bank to give a statement at that time, it may become very difficult for you to retrieve this statement. Bank would have archived this data. Bank may take its own sweet time to get this data. So it's a good idea that you maintain these records, download your annual statement, keep it safely in your mail folder or wherever you feel it needs to be secured. So every year, irrespective of the number of years, maintain your full transactions that you have done from your NRE account as well as your NRO account. There are certain times even the income tax will ask you a question. How did you buy this property? What is the source of funds? You will feel like pulling your hair to find out from where did you pay the money. So it's a good idea you maintain the records of your FCNR account, NRE accounts, NRO account every year for as long as you are an NRA, it may come handy at some point of time in future. Dear viewers, hope the video that I have done helped you to understand the points that you have to keep in mind when you are doing the NRA banking. If it did help you, do not forget to share this video with your near and dear one. And before I conclude, I request you if it helped you, do give me a thumbs up. Do recommend my channels to others. Keep sharing our content with your friends, relatives and on other WhatsApp group on which you are connected with. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRA Money Clinic. I shall be back with you next Friday with yet another episode of Your Life, Your Money. Till then, stay safe. Jai Hind. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.